Next question here, and I guess, you know, it, it leads to a bigger issue too about accepting federal funds. This one is related to the school system. Is it possible for the state to refuse federal funding for schools and choke off the indoctrination of our students? Would anyone like to take that question on? Uh, Carl? So, yeah. I mean, I'll start. I'm sure there's a lot of folks here on the education committees that will weigh in, and that is a bigger issue. Um, just the last two issues uh, are very reminiscent of this issue. We have a lot of money that comes from federal government. Um, you know, it was more coming from the federal government than we actually get in taxes here in Idaho. It was about a 40-38 split this time. The most recent numbers, it's about 37.2% comes from the federal government and 37.9% we, we are bringing as, in as a state. And that has a lot to do with the fact that uh, we have less ARPA money and we have less money that uh, was attributed to the COVID. Um, but you look at what we did as far as a vote. Uh, I voted against the uh, college and universities budget strictly because of the DEI, you know, and we did a great job as a state saying, hey, we're not going to spend any state monies, nothing out of the state general coffers, but we don't have a whole lot of control over some of the federal stuff. And, and that vote we took was, we don't want money coming from the federal government. But just to kind of frame this, because we're, I'm on committee in JFAC, and we get, we get presentations from all the agency heads. There's 110 different agencies, and, and uh, I won't name the college, but we were questioning this particular president about DEI. Um, they have all their funding for DEI that they either do through philanthropy or uh, whatever. You know, it, they, they're not using state funds. Uh, but they're, they were told, because they wanted to stop their program, and the federal government said, well, you can stop doing the DEI program, but you're not gonna have these federal funds that you, we give you for these other programs if you don't do it. So these, these are the strings that are attached to the money that we get from the federal government. Um, we talked about the hospitals, yeah, MTO laws minutes. that, excuse me? You got your two minutes. Oh, that's my two minutes. Well, that's it. All right, uh, Ben, do you want to have something you wanted to add to that? I, I think we need competition in education, and I think competition will help the uh, public schools straighten out when uh, they start losing students because of some of these uh, programs to the um, other alternatives in education that I think it'll make our public schools better. So anything we can do to create competition in education, I think could help. Hundred percent in agreement with the competition. The, the free the markets could put the right pressures on our education system. With market pressure, we could actually see quality go up, and I believe prices go down. But I think it's a little bit. Uh, the question was about federal funds. Uh, I really like what uh, Utah has done. They've actually set a budget up that is how they would run their state without federal funds. And uh, I started. I've started a conversation with Senator Herndon, who's on. JFAC and him and I uh, will work on something that would put Idaho doing the same thing where we do an analysis how can we uh, how we can can we run our state without that now this is the key it's it's not as easy as just stopping it immediately it's 37.3 percent of our uh, money is coming from the Fed so uh, I think that it, we really do need to do some analysis, but having a plan in place would do two things. One, it would create a path of how we could cut off some of that federal funding. And two, it would set up a plan that would allow us, in the case that the federal government stops to fund, stops funding us, uh, a plan where our, our state could still thrive and flourish despite those funds disappearing. Because I have no idea how we've gone as long as we have without the federal government um, stopping printing money and, and so I see that as going away at some point and if if it goes away we need to have a plan to deal with it. Thank you. Um, and just sorry. <laughs> and just being on the education committee, um, we have to change the makeup of our legislature and the House 
committee as well. We're not going to be able to stop any funding if we don't have more conservative people. And, um, and, and I witnessed that my two sessions being down there is that it was a tough, tough fight to fight against um, those who are okay with taking federal funds and okay with the strings that are attached. So that's gonna take a big shift in um, beliefs of people who are down in the state house. And uh, just a couple things. Uh, Idaho is dependent on federal money. Uh, we, we just need the federal money. One of our problems is the federal lands issues. About 62% of Idaho is federal, federally owned land. I asked, uh, as chairman of the resources, I, at the Idaho State Geological Survey, there's a guy, he's in, in Boise, or not Boise, but in Moscow at the University of Idaho. And I asked him, I said, you know, I've been telling people when I campaign that Idaho has at least a trillion, and a trillion is a giant number, if, for those of you who have never really played with all the zeros, but it's a giant number, a trillion dollars in mineral wealth in this, in this state. And I said, am I blowing smoke? And he thought for a minute, he just didn't say, and he said, no, you're not. He said, um, because there are so many minerals, there's so much wealth in this state. We got gold in, in uh, Salmon River. We've got, they're just, this state is incredibly wealthy. If we were able to utilize our own resources that are within our boundaries, we could get by without the federal money. But currently we are, we're stuck with federal money. If we take, say we're not gonna take it for education, then they'll cut us off somewhere else. They know how to play this game and they know how the money can control the policy, and that's what they've been doing. They've been playing this for a while, but the solution to this would be for the state to take control of the federal lands. And if we did that, we Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this next question, I want to give you a little bit of context here. Um, you know, for those of you who were not aware, uh, next month the ATF is uh, going to implement a rule that says if you sell a gun at a gun show for a profit, uh, they're gonna deem it as a, a transaction that should have been done with an FFL. And if you don't have an FFL, uh, you risk facing uh, jail time and uh, prosecution here. So, you know, what's largely happening in this country is that our rights and freedoms aren't typically being taken away wholesale. They're being taken away through death by a thousand cuts. And that is one of those cuts uh, because in essence, having to have to go through a dealer and get a background check on, on a private sale is a de facto, arguably, a de facto gun registration. Uh, we also just had the uh, FISA bill that was renewed, and um, that it allows for warrantless uh, searches on our private data. And so this question uh, is for any of the uh, legislators that would like to speak up. What do you believe is the biggest threat to our freedom? federal government. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and what can be done? What can be done at the state level to help protect our freedoms as they're being eroded? Well, this is directly uh, related to policing and enforcement. And who is the chief law enforcement officer? Sure. So if we could assume for a moment that our sheriff is going to stand up and say, wait a minute, you have no jurisdiction here to the federal government in every instance, and is able to make sure, and we've t talked about this briefly, but make sure that any federal agent that is going to try and act within the county is going to have to check with the sheriff first before they act, or they're going to be subject to arrest. I don't know how that's gonna work technically. But, but the Supreme Court has made it very clear uh, on the adjudication of that Brady Bill, the Supreme Court has made it very clear that the sheriff is the chief law enforcement officer and that the federal government has no power other than what we let them with respect to rules, with respect to the CFR, with respect to so much that we're just acquiescing to. And as uh, has been mentioned, the statists in Boise are numerous. And it is astounding to me that they think in terms of will the state agency, will the schools, will they have enough money to do their job? Forget about the taxpayer. So if we're talking about referencing federal government, the sheriff is the guy 
He's the guy, and we're going to assume that our sheriff is going to do that. But in that Prince, that uh, Prince versus U.S. Uh, uh, challenging the Brady Bill, there were only seven sheriffs that challenged that bill. Hmm. Only seven. I don't. I don't know how many there are. Maybe the sheriff knows, but but only seven sheriffs challenged that. So even within that realm of the chief law enforcement officer, we don't have sheriffs that believe <coughs> that the state is paramount, not the federal or the general government. Enough said. <laughs> and to add to that, uh, the state stands between the federal government and the county. Hopefully, the state can protect us and it doesn't get to the county sheriff, but that is our last line of defense, and hopefully, we don't have to get there. I'm going to point to something a little bit different just to make a point here. There was a, a proposal last fall, they were called natural asset companies. Now, basically what that was, it was a crazy idea. They actually asked for permission to sell stock on, in these companies on the uh, Securities and Exchange Commission. They reviewed that, and basically the point here is to, to basically to, you need to know a little bit about what those were and how insidious they were, but um, according to the proposed rule, NAC is an act, is for the purpose of this subsection, a corporation whose primary purpose is to actively manage, maintain, restore, and grow the value of natural assets and their production of ecosystem services. Noticeably, the proposed rule characterizes the distinct purpose of NAC as protecting and growing the natural assets under its management. This proposed rule also explicitly defines the term natural asset companies. Bottom line was, this was an idea to take over our natural assets in this nation. They were going to sell stock, they were going to form companies, and basically foreign governments could have invested in these things. It's a horrible idea. It keyed off of a thing as uh, uh, for sustainability. There's a rule that came through Congress. This was going to fund it. The bottom line is, and the reason I point to this, a number of us, as soon as I heard about it, our, my committee, we got involved in this. Uh, our state senators, our congressmen, our governor all weighed in on this. But what changed this and what stopped this was 20, this is a letter by, signed by 25 state attorney general, attorneys general. And they said that this is a really bad idea and they explained the whole thing and what was wrong with it. 25 states said no. If 25 states get up and say no to anything, we can change the world. We can certainly change this country because that the states created the federal government. Everybody is mistaken. They think the federal government allows us to exist. Not so. We yeah. created them, yeah. and we need to get back to that. But if you can get these same 25 states to sign on to anything, to say that we're going to close that border, we're going to activate our own National Guard, and we're going to go down there, we're going to close this border, whether you like it or not, there would be a constitutional crisis. and. Then, and we already have a constitutional crisis, we're just not admitting it. So this is something that needs to happen, but the states, if the states will stand up, and the attorneys general right now, I think are in an extremely well positioned to try to fight some of these things. But these are, and there again, it's a legal thing, and that's what they're using. They're using the rule of law to change this country. And without the rule of law, we have no country.